I want to do an example with an icebox problem where you have to use the quadratic equation because for some students you may not have thought about the quadratic equation in a while. And this is one of those great uh, things that you learn in like high school algebra classes and, and you learn this quadratic equation and you think, I'm never going to use this again. And then here we are, we're using it again. Yay! <laughs> those math teachers who told you you'd need this someday were not lying to you. Okay, so with an icebox problem, remember that ice stands for initial change and equilibrium. And so we're looking at systems in equilibrium. And if we're given some starting conditions, those initial conditions, meaning the concentrations of my reactants, and then I have a balanced chemical process, then that tells me what the molar ratios are and how it's going to change in order to reach equilibrium, because equilibrium is the state where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And so at equilibrium, when you take into account what you start with and how it's going to change, then that gives you the concentrations at equilibrium. And so if we know something about our K value, which is that equilibrium constant, then we're going to be able to solve for those equilibrium concentrations. Okay, so let's look at when we'd actually use the quadratic equation then. If we make our ice box, for this, given these conditions, I start off with two molar hydrogen and three molar iodine. Now I'm given no information about hydrogen iodide here, so um, so I know that if I don't have any information about it, then there isn't any, right? Because I started with this amount, but I haven't reacted them together yet, so I have none of this. Now the change comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. My reactants lose those molar ratios, so one to one here, and we pick up two of these guys because of the two coefficients. So positive for my products, negative for my reactants because we're using these up to get to equilibrium, and we're forming these to get to equilibrium. Now when we sum these together, we have two molar minus x, 3 molar minus x, and then the 2x for our hydrogen iodide. Now, in a past video, I used the same system, but I started with the same concentration of each of my reactants. And so I said, well, when I do my K expression, Kc here is equal to the concentration of my products raised to the power of their coefficient over the concentration of my reactants raised to the power of theirs, which are ones. And when I plug those in, when I had, here's my 2x squared. And then before, in a past video, when I had these two as the same thing, then I could just say, well, this is squared. And then I can take the square root of the whole thing in order to get rid of those. And it was much easier. So when you're working with perfect squares, then these are much easier to solve. But when we don't have perfect squares, because we don't always live in a perfect world and we don't always start with the same concentration of everything, unfortunately. Then now we have an equation that looks like this. And again, I'm setting this equal to the given equilibrium constant. So now it's a little bit more challenging of a problem. So, um, you know, if you're kind of rusty on the algebra, I'm going to walk through the steps here just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So um, what I would do for this type of problem is I would actually um, distribute and combine these things. So, um, you know, you multiply the outsides, you multiply the insides, you add together like terms, you multiply the ends, right? Um, so if you haven't done some factoring in a while or if you haven't thought about these types of uh, equations in a while, then this is good practice. Okay, so uh, two, 2x two squared is getting me 4x squared, and that divided by, so 2 times my 3 is 6, and then x times my 3 and x times my 2, both of those are going to be negative quantities, so that gives me a total of 5x that I'm subtracting there. And then my outside here is a negative x times a negative x, which gives me an x squared. And all of that is equal to 49.7. Now, again, there's lots of different ways that you can solve this thing. 
Um, but this is kind of the way that I would do it. I'd start unpacking these things and combining like terms. Now, my next step, again, if it's me who's in charge of solving this, is I would multiply my denominator here by my equilibrium concentration or my equilibrium constant. So when I do that, then I end up with 4x squared is equal to, and then I have 298.2 minus 248.5x plus 49.7x squared. Okay, now because I'm going to have some x squared terms and an x square x term, then I know that I'm going to need to use the quadratic equation, and I told you that from the get-go. So in order to use the quadratic equation, I need to set up my equation here equal to zero. So I need to get my entire, combine all my like terms, set the equation equal to zero, and then I can use those numbers in front of the different variables in order to plug them into the quadratic equation. So uh, if I subtract 4x squared from both sides, then I end up with 0 is equal to, and I'm going to rearrange these terms where my x squared comes first. So this is going to be the 49.7x squared minus my 4, so that gives me 45.7x squared. Then I'm going to keep my x here in the middle, 248. 0.5x, and of course I can do that because I can rearrange an equation without it changing the meaning here, and then um, plus my 298.2. Okay, now the reason that I did that is because when I'm using the quadratic equation, I need to know these numbers out front of my variables, and then this last number, because this number out front of my squared term here is going to be my a, the number in front of my variable is going to be my b, and the number that is on its own is going to be my c. And now we get into the quadratic equation. So the quadratic equation is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And these a's, b's, and c's, of course, refer to these numbers in your polynomial kind of expression here. So um, when I plug this in, and what I would do if I were you, is I would plug this formula into your calculator and then uh, have it solve for A, B, and C. This is your A, this is your B, this is your C. Make sure to include the negative sign there. Um, or there's also programs on your computer. So if you look online and you just search for you know, solving the quadratic equation, there's a lot of places where you just plug in your A, B, C values and it'll spit out the answers. Now, because we have a plus or minus here, we're gonna, it's going to spit out two different answers. So for this particular equation, my x is either going to be equal to 3.649 or 1.787. So what I have to do then is decide which one of these answers is, pos is possible from a physical standpoint. They're both possible from a mathematical standpoint, right? I plug them into this equation and this is what the math did. Um, but when, as chemists, these numbers have meaning, these values tell us something about uh, physical nature of something, so I need to factor them in with respect to these equilibrium concentrations that I'm given. So for my 2x, again, either one of these is going to be fine. Nothing is going to violate anything weird there. But now when we're thinking about subtracting these numbers from the numbers that we have for our reactants here, then anything that is greater than my starting amount is going to give me a negative concentration. So this would be 3 minus 3.6. That would give me a negative number. That would be 2 minus 3.6. That gives me a negative number. I cannot have a negative molarity. I can't have a negative number of moles per liter. That physically is not possible. So I know that my x value has to be this 1.78. So to answer my question then, which is um, what are the equilibrium concentrations for each of my reactants and products, then for my hydrogen concentration, that was that 2 minus my x. So 2 minus the x here gives me point to one molar. My concentration of my iodine here is going to be 3 minus my x, so that gives me 1.22 molar. And then my concentration for my hydrogen iodide 
this is going to be two times this value, and that's going to give me 3.56 molar. Okay, so there are my equilibrium concentrations. We can see here that it more heavily favors the products. We have a larger concentration of our products than I do either of my reactants at equilibrium. This makes sense, this jives, because of the magnitude of my K here. My K is 49, it's quite a bit more than 1, which means that in my overall expression the products are going to be favored. So this is a much larger number than this is going to be. So these concentrations make sense from kind of a standpoint of just understanding what this magnitude of K tells me. All right, so that's using the quadratic equation. You don't always have to use it, but you always can use it. So even if you did have a perfect square here, and you didn't think to take the square root of both sides, then you could still use the quadratic equation. You could still multiply things out, and then combine like terms, and put it all together, and then plug it in, and you end up with the same values. All right, if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.